What's good fam, in today's video I'm gonna show you a very trendy thing that has been popping up on Instagram recently and basically we're gonna cast the shadows which will make the whole scene more interesting. But before we begin, my name is Bart, I'm a video editor and I'm sharing daily tips on this channel. So if you want to become a better video editor, you got step 1 which is subscribing and then you got the step 2 which is checking out the description below and going to my store and supplying yourself with time saving video editing digital assets. So with that being said, I guess we're gonna get straight into After Effects. So this time we're gonna be working with a vertical comb, so 1080 by 1920 you can copy the settings and I'm gonna hit OK so first thing I'm gonna create a text let me just scale it down the second step is creating a new solid because we need a background so I'm gonna right click go to new solid and then I'm gonna leave a white color let's rename it to white BG let's hit enter and put it beneath the text since in this video we're gonna be casting shadows we need to create the camera first so for this I'm gonna right click go to new camera we're gonna pick a preset of let's say 50 millimeters hit OK then OK again, drag it downstairs and we're gonna create a new null object. Let's rename it to cam control. We're gonna parent the camera to the null. We could change the colors for these two and then we're gonna turn everything into 3D. We're pretty much set for the scene and now we're gonna head over to the second view because I'm gonna be separating the assets so there's a little bit of distance between them. So for the text we're gonna drag it with Z position a little bit further away from the background. Yeah, that seems perfect. And now from the right side we're gonna try to create a light source and we're gonna simulate the window with the blinds. So for this we're gonna create another solid and we're gonna change the color to blue. Let's hit OK and then we're gonna rename it to blinds. Let's hit enter. The color didn't really matter, but I just wanted to kind of emphasize that it's a window in all blue color, the sky. So we're gonna just turn it into 3D, drag it to the right, and then with Y rotation, we're gonna actually set it to 90 degrees. So this is kind of our window. We need to adjust it a little bit. Perfect. Then with that layer selected, we're gonna head over to the effect and we're gonna go to generate and let's pick grid. So that's what we got and we kind of want to create the blinds so we need only horizontal lines. So for this I'm just gonna grab the X from the corner and extend it and then I'm gonna take the X from the anchor and drag it to the left just like that. Now we could increase the border to make it thicker and we could also change the color to blue. I'll probably decrease the border and then with Y corner I'm just gonna squeeze it in. Just imagine that there's a window. <laughs> Alright, so the scene is literally perfect, but the only thing we really lack here is the sun. We don't really have a light source over here, so we can't recast the shadows. So for this, I'm gonna head over here, right click, go to new, and then pick light. I've already messed around with the settings a little bit, so just make sure you're in the spotlight. And the most important part is to check cast shadows. Here you're gonna define how dark are the shadows, so you can make it very soft. And then the shadow diffusion is gonna kind of work like a blur, so the more pixels you're gonna have here, it's just gonna be more soft on the edges. You could also play around with the intensity, cone angle, cone feather, but for this it's pretty much perfect. So I'm gonna hit OK. Okay, I was joking, it's not perfect. We're gonna double kick it again, and then we're gonna change the cone angle to something like 140 maybe. And then we're gonna decrease the intensity to 100%. And now we got the light source, but the thing is that we need to set up the light right behind our blinds. So we're gonna drag it to the right with X position, then to the back with Z, and then you can play around with orientation or head over to the rotation and change Y. Okay, so that's how it's looking from the side adjustment and here you got something called cast shadows and we need to switch it to on and as you can see we got the shadows that popped up over here and I can already tell that we actually went overboard with the shadow diffusion so I'm just gonna drag it down maybe 20 is gonna be fine let's hit okay also I'd probably turn down the darkness to like maybe 20% around 20% so now if we take a closer look you're gonna notice that the text is a little bit darker on the bottom because the blinds are casting the shadow on the bottom part of the text by the way if you wanted the text to cast the shadows as well you would head over to the text material options and turn it on and now you can see the text over here actually the shadow of the text but for this I'm gonna leave it like it was and now the whole scene is kind of boring so we're just gonna add the movement I'm gonna head over to the text hit alt shift P for the keyframe for position Move it somewhere here, then we're gonna slide it in from the bottom and let's use one of the graphs. The next thing would be creating a movement for the camera, we're gonna create a little pullback. So for this I'm gonna head over to the cam control 1, create a keyframe for position, move it to the very beginning and then we're gonna align the time indicator to the very last keyframe and we're just gonna move slightly backwards. I think I went overboard. Now I'm gonna apply the same graph as before. And now as you may notice we got a problem with the white background so we're just gonna head over to the scale and bump it up. It's already looking really good, we're just gonna head over to the camera 
And by the way, I didn't tell you that, but you need to double click the camera and make sure you're in the type to node camera. So with this, we're able to head over to transform, alt click the point of interest, because if you were working with only one node camera, you wouldn't have that option. So here we're gonna type in wiggle and in brackets, I'm gonna add 1,10, then click away. And we got a slight camera movement. Also, we gotta make this scene more interesting. So for this, I'm gonna head over here and I'm gonna open up properties, go to transform and we're gonna keyframe position. Now let's move maybe, wait, where is the last keyframe? So we're gonna align the time indicator with this and just create a slight Y position movement. So I'm looking at this, I feel like we could actually make that movement a little bit slower. So we're gonna take all the keyframes and drag them somewhere here. The thing with this is that you got so much freedom with casting the shadows and you can literally throw there any shape you want. So for example, if you head over to the blinds over here and then mess around with the settings for the grid, you're gonna achieve different looks. So we can take the X corner and decrease the value. And now we should have also vertical lines. So now it's looking really nice. And as you can see on the text, we got also the shadows and it's literally reflecting the real life camera because the shadows are acting exactly like you would have a light source from the window. So just to show you more possibilities of this, we could head over to the blinds, play around with the corner. Let's squeeze them in. That's kind of a nice effect. And then we could also go to the spotlight. Let's make the diffusion a bit less intense. Maybe even let's drag it down to zero and we could bump up the darkness, hit okay. And that's really nice. I feel like we could go to the scale in the text and bump it up so we can see more details. Let's play around with the border. I'm just gonna mess around with the settings. All right, so that's also a very nice effect. And like I'm saying, you can literally throw in here anything you want instead of the blinds. It can be a subscribe button, an After Effects logo, a text, or I don't know, maybe a graph. And remember, you can always play around with the light. Just double click it and here, you can just adjust everything. Maybe let's change the color. Oh, that's actually pretty cool. Okay, I like it. And remember, you can always head over to the properties in the text, go to material options, and here you can turn off accept slides, and then turn off accept shadows. And that way you got the original text. Like I'm saying, it's been popping up on Instagram a lot, so I think it's really worth to learn how to do it. To be honest, no idea who's invented that first, but kudos to that person. We're gonna wrap it up here. Check out the link in the description to save a lot of time, and I will see you in the next one. Cheers, guys.